the Jim and Terry show without Jim in the hot seat in the corner. We had some uh, family business to attend to this week and had to cancel. So, in light of that, here is a Jim less, uh, no, a Terry less Jim show. Terry less Jim. No, it's a Jim less Terry. Whatever the expression is, Jim is not here. What am I talking about this morning? God only knows. Well, I'm going to start with this one. You might have been familiar with, at least I was introduced to Reggie Jackson in the days of my father being a keen baseball player and having my first baseball mitt, as they used to call the baseball gloves. The mitt I had was just, well, if you've ever seen the old 19... 30s and 40s gloves, they weren't much more than what we would call a mitten. Really, not much leather and not much if you're stopping a hardball, let alone uh, this kind of sport that I was trying out for in public school back in the early 60s, which would have been fastball using the big ball, which was just as hard as a hardball, only big and it was thrown with windmill style underhand with a lot of movement on it. Anyway, as a public school, you didn't get a lot of movement. You were just worried about trying to hit the darn thing. Why Reggie Jackson? Why now? And that goes to Black Lives Matter. That goes to racism, a part of American history. That, if you're in a Southern State Bible Belt or Southern State Republican, you want omitted from your history lessons. You want omitted from your uh, lessons in public school. You don't want it studied in high school. And if by the chance, you, by chance you get to university or college, you certainly don't want the kinds of notions that a lot of right-wing, white, racist, nationalist, Christian nationalists want to see enacted in education which is to claim that there is a bit of a a bias in teaching black history, that it's diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is tipping the scales against the poor white folk. And I would like to play this clip to set it all in perspective. For those who don't believe that black uh, blacks in America... Especially, and not so much in Canada, although, you know, my father was aware of a lot of racism in Toronto back in the 30s and the 40s, and anti-Semitism, the same story, in Toronto, um, in the beaches in Toronto with signs that were anti-Semitic. The treatment of people, not as human beings, but by the color of your skin or what you believe, is discrimination at best. It's racism. It's uh, stuff that we needed, I thought, was worked on and gone. That's why we had all these laws passed against discrimination. That's why we have all these regulations about hate speech. Because, goodness knows, people are free to say what they want. But if you're promoting hate, that's another thing. Here's a clip of Reggie Jackson answering a question from Alex Rodriguez, who's now a color commentator for, I'm not sure what sports network it is, but here we go. Reggie, the, the baton has been passed for over a century here. We, we've been talking earlier about if it wasn't for the Willie Mays, the Jackie Robinson, the Reggie Jacksons, the three of us wouldn't have an opportunity to play. How emotional is it for you to come back to a play that you played with one of the greatest teams around? Alex. Alex, when people ask me a question like that, it's like coming back here is not easy. The racism that I played here, when I played here, the, the difficulty of going through different places where we traveled. Fortunately, I had a manager and I had players on the team that helped me get through it. But I wouldn't wish it on anybody. People said to me today, I spoke and they said, you think you're a better person. You think you, you, you won when you played here and conquered. I said, you know, I would never want to do it, want to do it again. I walked into restaurants and they would point at me and said, I can't eat here. 
I would go to a hotel and they say the can't stay here. We went to Charlie Finley's country club for a welcome home dinner and they pointed me out with the N word. He can't come in here. Finley marched the whole team out. Finally, they let me in there. He said, we're going to go to the diner and eat hamburgers. We'll go where we're wanted. Fortunately, I had a manager in Johnny McNamara that if I couldn't eat, if I couldn't, thank you, if I couldn't eat in the place, nobody would eat. We'd get food to travel. If I couldn't stay in a hotel, they'd drive to the next hotel and find a place where I could stay. Had it not been for Raleigh Fingers, Johnny McNamara, Dave Duncan, Joe and Sharon Rudy, I slept on their couch three, four nights a week for about a two, month and a half. Finally, they were threatened that they would burn the apartment complex down unless I got out. I, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. The year I came here, Bull Connor was the sheriff the year before. And they took base, minor league baseball out of here because in 1963, the Klan murdered four black girls, children, in 11, 12, 14 years old at a church here and never got indicted. It, it was, they were from the Klan. Life magazine did a story on them it, it, like they were being honored. It, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. At the same time, had it not been for my white friends, had it not been for a white manager and Rudy Fingers and Duncan and Lee Myers, I would have never made it. I was too physically violent. I was ready to physically fight some. I'd have got killed here because I'd have beat someone's ass and they'd have, you'd have saw me in an oak tree somewhere. Reggie. You would have seen me from an oak tree somewhere. The tale of Reggie Jackson. So isn't it interesting that we're still dealing with this kind of hatred, this kind of anger and rage against minorities, against people who look different, people who believe differently? And why is this in the news? Well, besides that interview with uh, Alex Rodriguez of Reggie Jackson, it happens to be June 21st, 1964, the anniversary of three civil rights workers who were murdered, murdered in Mississippi. And you may have seen the movie Mississippi Burning, which depicts this whole uh, ghastly episode in American history. And yet again, I just want to point out that there are many in the Southern Bible belts who are white Christian nationalists, who are supposedly evangelicals, who believe in loving your neighbor as yourself and turning the other cheek. But we find evidence that they really don't mean that. What this means in the Southern states, including Florida and uh, Ron DeSantis state is that they don't want this stuff taught they don't want this history exposed because it is the seedy underbelly of corruption it is the kkk enabled and abetted sometimes led by the local sheriff in these small southern towns the kkk marching in washington dc can you believe that well yes i can because they were marching at a rally when trump said they're good people on both sides. Don't forget these things. History is still being written, and these stories are not chapters in a book. They're the never-ending story of people who hate other people because they look different. So this uh, anniversary, it's 60 years ago. What has changed in 60 years ago? Well. In America, they're still trying to limit the rights of black voters. How is that any different? It's to remove them from the Voting Rights Act and not to allow them the chance to vote for anybody because who would blacks vote for? It's not Donald Trump, I hate to tell you that. But if you're thinking blacks for Trump, uh, you got something else. If you think that Trump was in a black church to talk to black people this past week, he wasn't. The audience was predominantly white. So all of this stuff is coming to a head because November, 20, November 2024 is election year in the United States, and it will bring a significant uh, inflection point, I think, in American politics. It will either say, steady the ship of state 
and we know what normal looks like. We know what values we stand for. And the silent majority is not conservative. The silent majority is progressive and cares about people and wants to have people helped out, not stomped on, beaten down, or lynched. And we have to remember the Charlie Kirks, the Alex Jones, and all the people who are spreading hatred and who are authors of fake news. That this stuff is going around and people are gullible and they won't study history, they won't learn what's going on. So, uh, again, I point to that interview at the top with uh, Reggie Jackson and say how appropriate on this 60th anniversary of the June 21st, 1964 murders of these three civil rights activists dying. Um, and again, there were Jewish activists, two of them, and one was a black activist, but all of them were killed for defending the rights of black people. And the KKK, with help from the local deputy, the local sheriff, did it. Committed, aided, and abetted the crime. Can't get any more hatred than that. And if that's what America wants for its future, well, you've got a candidate in Trump who has promised all kinds of things. And if you look up, just Google Project 2025 and learn that Trump wants to abolish abolish completely education as a federal jurisdiction. He wants states to be in charge of it. There should be no funding from the federal government. So basically defunding education. How is that going to work for America when you have trouble already with fake history where the truth cannot be told because it's embarrassing? Trump was laughed at at the United Nations he projected that and said, everyone's laughing at America. No, they're not laughing at America. They're laughing at you, Donald Trump, and the things you promised to bring in a second term. Black Lives Matter, yes, they do. Thank you, Reggie Jackson, Jackson for sharing your story. Thank you, Alex Rodriguez, for asking the question, timely question. We need to hear the stories. Don't bury them. Don't cover them up. Don't erase them from the books. Hear the stories. They're the stories for all of us to learn. Jim and Terry Show. Bye-bye for now.